Hello Makers! Today I am back talking about a subject that I have spoken about before and that is hygroscopic filament where it's it's the science where modern nature messes with your prints. I've showcased the difference of what dry filament does versus wet filament especially with some very hygroscopic filaments like TPU. Um, I've shown how to make your own filament dryer from home um, with a food hydrator. But today it's a bit different. Today we're going to talk about DryWise which is an inline filament dryer. Now disclaimer before I go on I want to make sure that you guys know that this episode is sponsored by Thought3D um, which are the manufacturers of DryWise. Now Thought3D is the same company that does Magigoo. They're a local company, very good friends of mine. So don't take this as a review. It's more of me showcasing what this machine is capable of, who it's aimed at, and why some companies might want to own this machine. Now, as I mentioned, hygroscopic filaments can be quite a pain when it comes to 3D printing, especially with technical filaments and more specifically, with nylon filaments. Nylon has a tendency to absorb a lot of moisture and you get to notice it if you start printing. You'll start hearing the snap, crackle and pop of the 3D printing world very quickly. Now for us as makers, if we want to print something in nylon, we tend to just throw a spool of nylon filament in the oven, uh, leave it there for a couple of hours and start printing. Now when it comes to the commercial side of things, if you have a large company which specializes in 3D printing and prototyping and manufacturing, um, your solutions uh, will not be a homemade dehydrating spool Wajamajigger. Chances are these companies will spend tens of thousands of euros on industrial ovens. They will have their spools all stacked up in this oven for hours on end. Especially if most of these companies use 2.85 millimeter filament, it's going to take much longer, tens of hours to dry that filament. Not to mention that even with a brand new spool, sometimes there's already some moisture in that filament, so you still need to dry it. So that brings in the factor of time and in a company time is money so having an order come in where you need to prototype or produce something where you have to wait 10 20 hours for your spools of filament to dry and then make sure that that process is unbroken while you're printing can be a bit of a hassle and also costly now drywise tackles that by being a machine that actually dries the filament as it's passing through it and it doesn't matter how moisturized your filament is it'll just go in from one end as moisturized as it could be and it comes out the other end perfectly dry and print ready so the dry wise comes in a cardboard box uh, this one i happen to pack myself at the factory um, everything is cardboard you have the machine itself then you have a box of accessories you get two of these what i call dry capsules which are capsules that attach to the back of the machine um, full of desiccant beads as you go along drying filament obviously the desiccant beads inside start filling up with moisture once they cannot absorb any more moisture dry wise will notify you on screen to replace it you simply unclip the old one insert the new one and then you simply open the capsule which contains the desiccant beads throw them in an oven for a few hours until they dry up throw them back into dry capsule and you're good to go you'll also have yourself some other accessories like a glove because filament tend to get really hot as it exits the dry wise machine you'll have a few ptfe couplers a couple of ptfe tubes you also have this 3d printed spool holder you get yourself power cables now for this particular machine i also got an add-on which is a preheater which you buy um apart from the actual machine itself it's there to kind of soften a little bit the filament that is going in and it's usually used with some technical filaments which are filled with glass fiber and such. Setting up the machine is actually very easy out of the box. All you need to do is attach the, uh, the, the dry capsule. Uh, I, I really think Thought3D should just call this the dry capsule. It, it just makes sense. It's a quick lock mechanism where you just push it in from the top and the bottom and it sits in place. If you do have the preheater add-on, all you need to do is just remove the, uh, the existing cover for the inlet and replace it with the preheater. You install the PTFE couplers to each end and also the uh, PTFE tubes. To install the spool holder, all you need to do is remove the four hex screws located at the top on the back part of the dry oils unit and then simply screw them back on with the spool holder in place. As you switch on, that's pretty much it. There's no setup process to go through for calibration. 
The machine actually comes pre-set with a lot of profiles for different filaments. Thought 3D work very hard to make sure that they test every filament. So each filament has its own settings and more will be added as they go along. However, if there are any companies that require a certain filament that is not yet listed on the machine, simply get in touch with Thought 3D and they will work on that profile for you. But once you know what filament you want to use, all you need to do is just choose that particular filament from the on-screen display. It will advise you to cut the filament uh, at the pointy end. Once that's done, it will instruct you to push the filament through. And this can take a while. As I said, the path inside is about 1.2 meters, so it's relatively long. Once you start pushing, it will advise you that you have a light on the front and a light at the back, which will be flashing green. Now inside this machine, there's quite a few sensors and blowers and fans and heaters. And once you start pushing the filament through, it will let you know how far you have to push with the lights that are blinking. So as you're pushing in and you reach a certain length outside of the bottom outlet, um, it'll just stay a solid green. That means that's the right um, distance to push. If you overshoot, it'll go red. You just pull back a little bit and that's that. Once it's pushed through, it will ask you if the filament is already pre-dried or not. If it's not, you can do a pre-dry process. Now this will vary depending on the filament itself. This one in particular took about 45 minutes to pre-dry. Once those 45 minutes are up, you simply grab the filament. Now here it will ask you to remove the first 10 centimeters length of the filament because that was the part that was sticking outside of drywise. I decided to leave it there because I do love a transition print just to show you guys exactly the difference that it does. And you can insert it in the extruder. Now in my case, seeing as all I can use is this Zmor Fab, which is the only one I have with a 2.85 millimeter attachment. It's a relatively longish distance from the outlet to the extruder. It's not like an Ultimaker where I can just pass the filament through right next to it. So I decided to add my own uh, length of PTFE tube just to make sure that it's covered nicely. So once I passed it through the PTFE tube, I loaded up the extruder and I let the machine know that the extruder was loaded. This is where it asks you to wait for 15 minutes. And the reason why it does that is because you've actually pulled out almost all the dry filament on the inside. Well, at least in my case, in order to load up the printer. The results are relatively obvious. In fact, the transition print, you can actually see where the filament went from wet to completely dry. And it's it always blows my mind when I see that. As I mentioned before, you also get notifications on screen when the dry capsule needs replacement because it cannot dry any filament anymore. And you also get notifications for O-rings. The machine has a lot of O-rings around, so it will notify you as well if any O-rings need replacing. Now, obviously in the accessory box, you will get quite a few spare ones. I happen to have spent quite some time using this machine because I recorded all the promo videos for uh, Thought 3D for Drywise and every time I use it it just blows my mind away at how quick all this happens. Yes you have the one hour preheat and setup which could be limited um, to even less uh, depending on the filament that you're using but it's just amazing and once again if you're a maker, this is not going to be, you know, a machine for you. You're not going to spend that much on this machine. You're going to buy a food dehydrator, but bear in mind, commercial companies will spend seven, 8,000 euros, 10,000 euros on a, uh, on Ultimaker, on a BCN 3D. So this is relatively low cost compared to that machine. And it's something that will save them a lot of time because instead of grabbing a 2.85 millimeter um, spool of filament and throwing it in the oven for 10, 20 hours, especially if it's a large, like two or three kilo spool, which is gonna take 30 or 40 hours, you can start printing with it after an hour with this. Now Thought Treaty have confirmed that they are also working on the 1.75 millimeter version of this, uh, which will be in a beta phase later on this year, I believe during Form Next. Um, so make sure you uh, you look out for that if you are interested in such a machine. So from my end, that is it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this first look at the Drywise. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. I'm sure Thought Treaty will be looking through the comments and answering any questions. I will also leave their contact info and uh, where you can find more about Drywise in the video description. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more 3D printing related content projects, please make sure you subscribe, smash the like button, and as always, happy making guys.